And speaking of harmful bacteria that you want to avoid, when was the last time you had an upset stomach or the 24-hour flu? And do you know what caused it? Well, as TV8's Kathy Cronenberger discovered in her special series starting tonight, you may have made yourself sick right in your own home. That's right, Tim and Robin. Now, this may come as a surprise, but there is something in your home that you use every day and would probably assume is pretty clean. But in reality, it's covered with bacteria, bacteria that can make you very ill without you even realizing it. Now, what room in your house do you suppose has the most germs? The bathroom? Not quite. Hmm, wonder what I should have to eat. It's the kitchen, from your refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, this looks good. To your microwave, to your ice bucket and countertops. Although you can't see them, bacteria and germs are everywhere. And if they get on your food, they can make you very sick. <laughs> hmm, just doing the dishes. In the toilet? Disgusting, right? You'd never think of doing this, would you? Well, get this. According to a recent study, there's more fecal bacteria, the bacteria that comes from human and animal waste, in your dishwater than in your toilet water. How's fecal bacteria getting in your dishwater? Here's one culprit, the bacteria motel, also known as your kitchen dish rag or sponge. It's just squeeze the liquid out like that, and we can test that liquid. Charles Gerba is a researcher at the University of Arizona who tested 500 kitchen dish rags in five major cities. What he found may surprise you. Well, we found that uh, almost a quarter of all dish rags in, in the United States that we tested contain salmonella bacteria, and that can cause a very serious illness and diarrhea in the home. But salmonella wasn't all he found. The dish rags and sponges were loaded with bacteria like E. coli, staphylococcus, and fecal coliforms, which can all cause food poisoning, even death. There are thousands of deaths every year in the United States uh, from salmonella and other enteric bacteria. So it is a very much concern, particularly in certain groups of people can get very ill. Uh, the elderly in particular, immunocompromised individuals, young children, uh, and pregnant mothers. In fact, the Centers for Disease Control estimates 7 million people get food poisoning every year. But many of us mistake it for the 24-hour flu, never thinking it came from our own kitchen. More than half of the foodborne illness in the United States now occurs in the home. It's safer to, to eat out at a restaurant than eat at your neighbor's home in reality. So just how are fecal bacteria and salmonella getting on your dish rag? Well, the raw meat and vegetables you bring home, for starters. We do have guidelines, however, that state on a raw meat product, you're allowed 10 million bacteria colonies per gram. Now, most of that bacteria is killed when you cook your food. But what about the raw remains on your cutting board and counters? Many of us use a dish rag or sponge to mop up the juices, which just means we're moving the bacteria that was there to here. Many people just rinse it under the, you know, under the water, wring out the water and throw it in a pile on the edge of the sink. You're, it's still going to be damp. You're still going to have a wet situation. There's probably still going to be food particles in your dish rag, in which case that's a perfect environment for the bacteria to grow. But you say, I'm sure harmful bacteria only grow on other people's dish rags and sponges. Hi, we're with Channel 8. We're collecting dish rags. Well, we wanted to find out too. So we did our own test and collected 20 Thank dish rags and sponges from kitchens throughout the Cleveland area. <laughs> I thought I had pretty much heard them all, but believe me, you, that takes a okay. You want to autograph it? <laughs> we even grabbed the dish rag in 92 year old Louise Scutterin's kitchen sink, which she keeps in soapy water but has never run through the washing machine. Boy, oh boy, you think we're going to find any germs on this? I don't think they're going to find any germs on this. Uh, they don't live in soap. Is Luis right? Does hot soapy water kill bacteria? All righty. There you go. Tomorrow we'll find out when the final lab results are in. They look pretty grubby. 
Now, isn't this some amazing stuff, Tim and Robin? I mean, I had no idea before we started doing this research that your dish rag could be such a breeding grounds for harmful bacteria. And toilet water is cleaner than dish water? I know. I never knew raw meats could be covered with so much fecal coliform and your vegetables, too, because they're from the dirt and that's where it comes from. But you're not going to miss uh, want to miss tomorrow's because uh, tomorrow's piece, we're going to look find out the results of those 20 rags we tested. And boy, what an eye-opening experience. They're all from Cleveland homes, all from people who think they keep right. a pretty clean kitchen. And then eventually you're going to tell us how to protect our homes from right, this, because, right? Because, yeah, it, yeah, that's the best information coming up on Friday. Stay tuned. It'll be at 6 and 10, and we'll tell you what you need to do to keep your kitchen clean because it's easy. Frozen oh TV my. dinners and paper plates. There, there you go. go. <laughs> that's yeah. one solution, but if you don't want that, we've got another one for you. All right. All thank right. you, Kathy. I think. Well, just how dirty is your dish rag or sponge? You might be shocked when you see what we have found. National studies have found all kinds of harmful bacteria that can cause food poisoning, growing inside everyday dish rags and sponges. Well, we wanted to see if Cleveland is the exception or the rule. As her special series continues tonight on your dirty little dish rag, TV8's Kathy Cronenberger has the results of her Cleveland dish rag survey. At 92 years old, Louise Scudderin has more experience than most when it comes to keeping a clean kitchen. I use a lot of soapy water, and um, I keep my soap pretty handy right there by my elbow. But is washing out her dish rag in hot soapy water every night, like so many of us do, really keeping it clean? Auntie, <laughs> come here. Channel it. Get your butt out here. <laughs> Bring me a dirty dish rag or a... Well, we wanted to find out, so we collected used kitchen dish rags and sponges from 20 Cleveland area homes, including Auntie Margaret's. This is a sponge. Well, oh, that's a pathetically dirty sponge. Then we took them to Acra Microbiological Labs to have them tested for bacteria like E. coli, Staphylococcus, Salmonella, and fecal coliforms, all germs that can cause food poisoning. And now the results are in. Here's one that we ran for Staphylococcus. Uh, That's food poisoning. And this strain. is just a food poisoning strand. <clears throat> and all those little dark spots are. That represent a, a colony. Yeah. Every single dish rag and sponge we tested had it bacteria growing on it. The amounts ranged from a little over a thousand colonies of bacteria to more than 34 million colonies on one sponge alone. Your dish rag is a perfect home for bacteria. Many bacteria won't cause illness at all. Some bacteria, however, can cause food poisoning. And that can be anything from an upset stomach to a three-day stay in the hospital. Most surprising, 12 out of 20, or 60% of the dish rags and sponges were full of fecal coliforms, the bacteria that comes from animal and human waste. It's generally used to indicate poor sanitation. Mm -hmm. um, its source can be um, from the intestinal tract of, of warm-blooded animals, that's uh, feces or, or something like that. It could even come from dirt. On top of that, 6 out of 20, or 30 percent, tested positive for Staphylococcus, a bacteria that causes food poisoning. Now, it's not like these dish rags and sponges had been used for years. The oldest was this sponge that was six months old. But surprisingly, it didn't test positive for any food poisoning bacteria. Turns out some of the unhealthiest rags had just come out of the washing machine in the last week or two. Well, we found actually at home some of the cleanest people are really the dirtiest as far as microbiology because when you're rubbing and cleaning things around, you're just spreading them around. You're not really killing them. You're just moving them from one place to another in the kitchen area. But having a bacteria-ridden sponge or dish rag doesn't mean you're a slob. It just means you're not using it or cleaning it the best way. I'm kind of... Uh, uh, standing here unbelieve you're not even believing that but I'm sure you're not you know I'm sure you're telling the truth take Minnie Proctor she keeps a very clean house but her dish rag was the worst in our study contaminated with staphylococcus and E. coli which can also cause food poisoning plus 1.5 million other bacteria colonies there's no need to put it in the wash machine. And then there's Louise Scudderin, who told us soapy water is enough to kill any germs or bacteria. But we found more than two million colonies growing on her dish rag. Yes, you are cleaning your dish rag, but you, don't, you aren't necessarily washing out all the bacteria that are present. 
the soap that's there may not be antibacterial, which means it's not killing anything, it's just washing it away. And if you don't wash everything away, then there's still organisms there that can grow. So, like many of us, Luis was misinformed. Hot soapy water isn't enough to kill bacteria and germs, but even at 92, Luis was quick with her defense. I'm going to have reservations because uh, the uh, lady that was here had done the dishes, and there could have been a little deviation from the way I do it. <laughs> so if you found some germs on it... It's not your fault. <laughs> not my fault. <laughs> That's a good way to get out of this. Well, as we have shown you this week, your kitchen dish rag or sponge is the perfect place for food poisoning bacteria to grow. Ah, uh, but tonight, as Channel 8's Kathy Cronenberger reports in her series on those dirty little dish rags, we have a solution for you. Tim and Robin, so many people have called to ask me, what do I do about this? Well, that's what we wanted to show you tonight, what you need to do to keep your dish rag or sponge free of harmful bacteria. And we started off with a little germ background music, courtesy of the Valley Forge High School Singers. One, two, three. I got germs, they're multiplying. In my kitchen, out of control. They're in my dish rag. we know our dish rags and sponges are the perfect breeding grounds for the kinds of bacteria that cause food poisoning, the next question is, how do we get rid of them? Getting dirt into things is easy. A brand of a hand, the twist of a wrist, the slip of a lip. And getting dirt out is easy, too. Boy, some things never change. This 1950s commercial was one of the first to promote bleach as a good way to kill germs. Now, some 40 years later, and with all the cleaning products out there on the market, bleach is still one of the best ways to kill harmful bacteria. Bleach is good. Um, you can use maybe a teaspoon to a quart of water and thoroughly wash out your sponge. Now, if you don't want to use yeah. bleach, microbiologist Christine Anderson away. says there's a host of other cleaning products that will do a good job, too. From sprays to sponges, just look for the words antibacterial, disinfectant, or kills germs. If I use this dishwashing liquid, regular dishwashing liquid, to make up some soapy water and I got my sponge in there, am I killing any bacteria? No. No, you're not. Where's the bacteria going? Well, it could be staying in the sponge or mm -hmm. could be going... Um, in the residue back into your soapy water. One more way to kill bacteria, toss your sponge in the dishwasher every night. If you're not using germ-resistant products, you can always put them in the dishwasher. That high dry cycle usually kills all the bacteria that could potentially make you ill. But how you clean your dish rag or sponge is only half the equation. How you use it is just as important. These bacteria that end up in your kitchen area, these fecal bacteria that I was talking about, come in on the raw meat products you're bringing at home, like poultry. More than a third of them contain salmonella bacteria, and also, like hamburger meat products in particular, contain enteric bacteria. You see, it's not enough to disinfect your sponge. Harmful bacteria can get trapped in the deep grooves of your cutting board and on your counters, wherever raw meat or dirty vegetables have touched. The key is don't wipe up that bacteria with your kitchen sponge. So if you just take a couple paper towels, you know, wipe up whatever may be there, you're taking up the juice, which has the bacteria in it, and then you're just throwing it away. This is not coming into contact with anything else. It's not coming into contact with you. And last but not least, don't forget about your hands. Keep your hands clean. Use an antibacterial soap because your hands is just like spreading a cold or something like that. The bacteria is on your hands. It's going to get to whatever you touch. Some tips even 92-year-old Louise Scudderin wasn't aware of. I'm sure was very much surprised. Still, at 92, okay. Luis must be doing something right. <laughs> well, you don't have to become paranoid about germs in the kitchen area, but you should become germ wise and use the proper cleaning tools and, and proper cleaning products in the home. Germs in my dish rag, germs in my sponge, oh, germs in my kitchen, oh, 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 oh. 
Now, I'm sure you're going to be humming those tunes when you're cleaning up with bleach. I know it. Again, I want to thank the singers at my alma mater, Valley Forge High School, for helping us today. They sure were great sports. Yep. Yes, they were. Now, I have a question. Sure. Does color safe bleach work just as well as regular bleach? That's a good question. A lot of people have called and asked me that. I called Clorox and they say no, color safe bleach doesn't work the same way because it uses a different cleaning agent that does not kill bacteria. Yeah. So you either want to use white dish cloths or yeah. expect them to lose a little color. But I think it's worth it. Yes yeah. it is. One last thing I wanted to say is this has gotten so many calls. This series is oh, unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, I got a call from David Carr tonight. He says he wishes we could extend the series because his wife's kitchen has never been so clean. <laughs> I even got a call from a woman who's originally from Norway who says they don't even use dish rags in Norway. They use um, those bristly, uh, what am I thinking about? Those, you know, those bristly <laughs> you know. things. Oh, yeah, I think that, I have yeah. brushes. There you go. Brushes, yeah. They use brushes. I've heard of those. <laughs> because they think it's disgusting how in America we use dish rags and it gets all dirty. Well, germs, and so. if there could yeah. be a female Mr. Clean, it would be my wife. And Kathy yeah. says that's why she always uses paper towels. That's a smart, that's yeah. really the best thing. Exactly. And she has hair, so. That's another good. <laughs> That's right, and and I and I really like the number you use from Greece. Yes, yeah, well, you know, when good. you do these series and you're singing yeah. in the shower, you come up with a lot of crazy tunes. Oh. <laughs> if you get too close to it. That, that was very good. Yes, very good. Thank you, Kathy. Well, he didn't.